What's up, Pelda Sword? Welcome back to the channel. So today I want to go through the key players in the new Disney Plus show, Ahsoka. So we're going to start it off with Ahsoka Tano. Brief history on Ahsoka. She was a Padawan of Anakin Skywalker through the Clone Wars. And then because she was framed for a bombing at the Jedi Temple by a longtime friend, Barris Afi, she walked away from the order. She did end up coming back and she ended up finding out what happened to Anakin Skywalker. And then she kind of disappears. She ends up coming back into Star Wars in Star Wars Rebels. And she ends up helping out the ghost crew with the different, some different missions. She was a uh, secret uh, informant. She ends up dying by the hands of Darth Vader. And later on in the Rebel series, we end up seeing Ezra Bridger actually save her using something called the World Between Worlds. At the end of Star Wars Rebels, Ezra Bridger uses these space whales called Pergola to transport Grand Admiral Thrawn and himself to the outer regions. These space whales basically can travel through hyperspace. So they kind of took them to a brand new galaxy. So the last time we see Ahsoka is that she is kind of recruiting Sabine Wren and they're going to go off and try to find Ezra. Next we have Huang. He was briefly in the Clone Wars animated series and this droid actually ended up helping young Padawan learners create their own lightsaber hilts. And we saw in the first episode of Ahsoka that he ends up knowing that Balon um, he created that lightsaber because he was there when it happened. So I thought that was a pretty cool little thing. I'm excited to see what they do with this character. And if you did not know, Ewing is actually voiced by the great David Tennant. Sabine Wren. So we learned in the first couple episodes of the Ahsoka series that uh, Sabine was actually a uh, Padawan of Ahsoka Tano. I will be dropping a timeline video tomorrow uh, that kind of helps explain exactly where we are. We definitely go back in the past in the first couple episodes of uh, Ahsoka uh, compared, compared to, to where we left off in Rebels. So it's actually quite interesting the way they uh, decided to do this. But we do see that she is a Padawan of Ahsoka. Things don't go exactly correctly. We kind of have a, somewhat of a damaged relationship. Sabine, at the end of the second episode, she ends up cutting her hair because she did have longer hair, which shows that you know, after some time has passed, she ends up uh, getting back all her Mandalorian armor, and her and uh, Ahsoka are off to hopefully find Ezra. Lothcat. Listen, we cannot have a breakdown without talking about the most adorable creature in Star Wars. For me, I don't know. It's a toss-up between the Lothcat and Grogu. Um, I absolutely love the way they constructed this. I don't know if it's fully uh, a puppet or not. Uh, some, some of the scenes I thought were maybe a little CGI, but put me in for three of them. I will house three of these and save them from the Empire. General Hera Sedula. So when I originally saw who was cast, I was like, ah, okay, you know, um, she's married to Hugh McGregor. I was a little disappointed that Vanessa Marshall did not get a crack at this. But in all seriousness, I thought she knocked it out of the park. Uh, and that would be uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. I definitely thought that she was one of the stronger characters in the first two episodes, along with Balon. So just a little background on Hera Syndulla. She had a child with Kanan Jarrus at the end of Star Wars Rebels uh, named Jason. It's funny that we did not get any type of mention because where was he during all this action? Um, so I'm curious to see if we're going to end up seeing him in the series, um, or at least let him get mentioned. Uh, it was a little bit weird that, you know, she's just kind of like doing her thing, and I guess she has a babysitter, I don't know. Uh, but she's obviously a general with the Republic. After Rebels, you know, she went on to lead the Phoenix Squadron. She was there at the Battle of Scarif, and she has been a general uh, ever since. So I'm very curious to see where they're gonna go with her character since now that we see Ahsoka and Sabine kind of going off by themselves. So I'm very curious to see what they're gonna do with this character. Chopper. 
So Chopper was not in it a ton in the first couple episodes, but I thought they did a fantastic job with Chopper. Uh, it looks exactly like uh, you know the animated version. Uh, Chopper plays a huge role in episode two because he's the one who throws the tracking beacon onto the Imperial shuttle. And yeah, hopefully we get a lot more Chopper. I'm curious too because how much more Chopper are we gonna get if Hera did not go with Sabine and Ahsoka? Because you know Chopper and Hera are kind of like linked together, so we'll see. Anakin Skywalker. I'm starting to believe that we are going to get a ghost form Anakin, um, a Force Ghost Anakin. I don't know if we're going to get flashbacks. I feel like the first two episodes were the perfect spot to do a flashback. Heading into where we are now, I just don't know if it makes sense to do like some major flashback back to the Clone Wars. Um, obviously, an episode could start with that, and you know that would be a, a, you know, a high possibility. But I feel like as we move forward, it almost seems like it'll be more like in real time. We know Hayden was cast. We know he recorded lines. So I, I don't think we'll see him in, in, in the suit, the Darth Vader suit, which was one of the things I really wanted to see. Um, I don't know. It just, it's, it's interesting because you look at how the, the first two episodes of the show were structured. I just don't know how it fits into the storyline. Um, so I, I'm thinking that he's going to maybe possibly give Ahsoka some advice on the training, or at least her new training with Sabine. Morgan Elspeth, one of the most intriguing characters for me. I don't absolutely love the character right now, uh, but I love the fact that she's linked and she is a knight sister. Um, so down in the picture on the right, you can see that's Mother Talzin and that is Asajj Ventress. I'm absolutely loving the connection. I'm so glad they're bringing the Star Wars magic into live action. Uh, I, I think, you know, your regular viewer probably doesn't even know about this. I wish they would explain it a little bit more just for new viewers so they're not like super confused. Cause I think if you're a new viewer to the show, you probably think she was using the force, even though she does mention that she is the last night sister, which I don't know if that's true because as far as I know, Asajj Ventress is still alive. Um, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Balan Skull. So RIP Ray Stevenson. Um, probably one of my two favorite characters in the series thus far. So he is a former Jedi. Uh, he was around during the Clone Wars. He's probably a few years older than what Anakin would be. So he knew all about Anakin Skywalker. He knew that what had happened with him. At some point, he hooked up with Grand Admiral Thrawn. He kind of is a mercenary by hire. So I'm really curious to see how all that will link together and hopefully we can get maybe a little more backstory on him, but I think he did a fantastic job in the first two episodes, and I'm really excited to see where the character goes with Ray passing away. I don't know what's gonna happen at the end of the season. I don't know how this character could you know, live on, but we shall see. I love the orange lightsaber too. Shin Hati. So Shin Hati is the Padawan learner of Balon. Um, I am not exactly sure who she is, uh, I definitely have theories. Uh, my main theory is I do believe that she's gonna end up being Balon's daughter. And she does sport a Padawan braid, which means to me that Balon, you know, is probably doing what he has to do to survive. So for me, I almost see more darkness in her than I do Balon. And I feel like it's going to be some type of conflict between these two. And it, it will be really interesting if she ends up turning out to be his daughter. It's very interesting. And I, again, another very strong character uh, in the series. Now we have Merrick. So Merrick is an inquisitor. Um, at least that's what he pretends to be, if he's really not an inquisitor. Uh, we don't know who's behind the mask. There are tons of theories, and we're gonna go through a couple of those here in a moment. Um, I really like the character. He has not really said anything yet. Um, I think he had a grunt in episode two. So I know we're gonna get more of him. Um, I love the uh, how he threw the lightsaber and spun it. Uh, very Jedi uh, survivor-like. Um, it was really cool. So well, we're definitely gonna talk more about him in a moment. All right, so here are the usual suspects for Merrick. 
All right, so here we go. The first one, I believe he could be is Ezra Bridger. This is a very, very common one out there right now on the interwebs, and it, it makes sense to a point. Here's my thing with Merrick. I don't want it to just be some inquisitor that just happened to like survive and whatever. We, we almost have that almost a little bit in Balon. We don't need another one. My big problem with it being Ezra is that Ezra already went through the dark side challenges when he hooked up with Maul. And I feel like, why do we need to go down that road again? So for me, I hope it's not Ezra, um, unless they come up with a really good story. You know, maybe he's somehow found his way back and he's kind of decided to dress up like an Inquisitor, which would make sense because he battled so many of them. And he's almost like, kind of trying to be like a spy. And uh, he's trying to figure out where, how to get back to Thrawn. Uh, maybe he didn't finish the job or something like that. That would be about the only way, but if Ezra turned bad, I just would not like it. Um, I, I just think it does not go along with what he did at the end of Rebels, and it doesn't go with his character. Saz Ventress. I would absolutely love for this Merrick to be a Saj Ventress. I need her back in live action. Not need her back, I need her in live action. Um, she's one of the most intriguing Star Wars characters. She is also a knight sister, so it would make sense to have her hook up with Morgan. For me, she's probably one of the top choices for me personally. I would absolutely love it to be Saj. She's probably one of my top five characters in all Star Wars. Star Killer. So there's a lot of rumors on this. Listen, Sam Witwer is a huge Star Wars guy. Absolutely love to see him. You know, really all we ever get is his voice. So to bring him into a character where he actually played in the video game, Force Unleashed, I think would be absolutely fantastic as long as it's done correctly. I would be completely blown away if this uh, Merrick ends up taking that helmet off and it's actually Sam Witwer. I, I would love it. Do I think it's gonna happen? Probably not, but I, I would love it. And then we have Barris Afi. I think this is probably the way I'm leaning the most right now. Uh, I think it just makes sense. She would be against Ahsoka. She is, uh, you know, fluent with the Force. She had turned to the dark side. The last time we saw her, uh, her and Ahsoka were fighting, and then she kind of just disappears. She's also the one who basically made Ahsoka quit the Jedi Order because she had framed her for the Jedi Temple bonding. So for me right now, I think this would make the most sense if this Inquisitor you know, is actually somebody we know of. So for me, I think that would probably be my number one. You know, I have other ones too. I would love to see Mara Jade. I just don't know how it would fit if they're not gonna bring Luke in. So, um, but yeah, those, so those are the four that I think that Merrick could be. At this point, you've probably already seen this, but this was in the credits of the uh, second episode. Uh, where Sam Witwer was used as an additional voice. Now, this does not mean he was not some of the droids, one of the side characters, but we do hear Merrick do like a grunt. But it's very interesting that his name is listed there. So, you know, let the speculation begin. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. Let me know down in the comments what character have you enjoyed watching so far. Uh, don't forget, we have our breakdown reviews every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Check me out over on Patreon. Uh, also, channel memberships are now up. Our next Patreon meeting here will be in about two weeks. I got some cool stuff planned, some cool giveaways. So definitely take a look at that. All of those links are down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching the video. Keep those heads on, and I'll see you guys in the next one.